Journalists are still getting triggered by the learn to code meme. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Obvious bringing you the obvious. And here on The Verge, Representative Devin Nunes repeated a 4chan meme on national television. Knowingly or not, Nunes was amplifying a targeted harassment campaign. No, he wasn't. By Bishan Stephen. Last night on Laura Ingram's show, The Ingram Angle, a strange thing happened, stranger than usual, I mean. Representative Devin Nunes, Republican of California, stopped by for an interview to talk about Representative Adam Schiff, latest actions regarding the ongoing Russia probe. This is clearly an investigation again, without a crime. We've looked for two years, didn't find anything at all, Nunes said, which is misleading at best, B. John claims. He went on to speak about the cottage industry of press people who are following the case and reporting it. So the public has an idea of what goes on behind closed doors. Nunes sounded offended when he reported to the Capitol for what was, in his words, a routine meeting. And he saw many camera people waiting for him in there. So as you can clearly see, the author of this article is biased and probably a lefty type. Here's what Devin Nunes actually said, and this is what's triggering all the journalists. So long after the meme started, Learn to Code is still triggering them all. Tell Chair, Congressman Devin Nunes, Congressman, what do you make of Schiff's charges? Well, it was not a surprise it was reopening the Russia investigation. But this is clearly an investigation, again, without a crime. We've, we've looked for two years, didn't find anything at all, because there's been a whole cottage industry of press people that are in the Capitol. We show up to our business meeting just to organize, and there must have been 15 cameras down there and 30 press people, and I'm thinking, what in the world are these people doing here? I don't know what these people are gonna do, this, this cottage industry of press people. They're gonna have to go learn code or something. Well, they're gonna have to go learn code or something. Well, they're gonna have to go learn code, go learn code. Yes, this dastardly felon, this dastardly man dared to tell them to learn to code. Instead of pushing their false narratives, pushing their false stories, and trying to ruin and slander people's lives. We all know the Russia investigation is absolute horse crap. We know that there's actually nothing there. It's been so long now. And they still have no evidence. Zero evidence because there was not a crime. Of course, Democrats will never accept that because they're functionally insane. And here's the thing. As he said, it's something that the Obama era said. It's something that happened during his time. Many journalists and many media organizations told laid off coal miners that they should just learn to code. So what does this article say about it? Well, I think you'll be pleased to find that they are truly, truly triggered. When Nunes said to learn to code, he was amplifying a mass harassment campaign that started on 4chan's politics board, which was meant to target journalists. The last few weeks have not been kind to media professionals. <laughs> Media professionals, you say. More like hack jobs who work hack jobs. More than a thousand jobs have been lost after layoffs at HuffPost, BuzzFeed, Verizon, and Gannett. And the general mood across the industry can be described as anxious and depressed. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you attacked innocent people. Maybe you should have thought about that before you tried to ruin people's lives. The mainstream media and all of these so-called journalists have really created a horrible image and bad name for themselves. They've gone after a lot of innocent people, and now that they're getting the hacksaw, they think they have a right to whine? And let's just make some corrections, because obviously these far-left normies don't know squat about squat. First of all, it's not 4chan's politics board. It's 4chan's politically incorrect board. That's exactly what he's referring to, and it is a board where people discuss political issues with no filter and with no restrictions on free speech. It is a free speech board where anyone, and I do mean anyone, can go, view, and post. It is not a club. It is not a special club collective of weaponized autists. It is, in fact, a group of anonymous citizens doing their part to make the world a funnier and more truthful place. So he's making the claim that this was just a harassment campaign. Learn to Code was just about harassing journalists. However, let's debunk that right now. Now, I'm not really a fan of the Know Your Meme website. They're surface level, they don't really get the full story, and I've seen more than one or two posts where they claim to tell the whole story, but really, they don't. Because I've actually been there and I've seen, I've seen a lot of memes come to life firsthand, and they don't always get it right. But, in this case, they actually do a pretty good job of saying where the Learn to Code meme 
name actually comes from, and it doesn't come from 4chan, it doesn't come from the right wing, it actually comes from the left. Origin. On February 10th, 2014, BuzzFeed News published a quiz titled, Should You Learn to Code? Which provided links to articles recommending coding for people with various interests or professions. Several months later, in April of 2014, in response to a comment by Mark Zuckerberg about shifts in energy use that has led to many coal miners and coal mines, being closed and being laid off, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg at the Future of Energy Summit said, you're not gonna teach a coal miner to learn to code. Mark Zuckerberg says you can teach them to code and everything will be great. Over the next year, other media outlets published pieces on coal miners learning to code. On November 18th, 2015, Wired published, can you teach a coal miner to code? <laughs> wow, that isn't insulting. That isn't belittling in any such way. Gee, I wonder why people were telling all of these laid off journalists to learn to code. It couldn't possibly be that they were getting back at them for insulting and belittling all of the laid off coal miners. The article which took issue with Bloomberg's assertion focused on several coal miners who were in fact learning to code. So make no mistake folks, this was started by journalists themselves. And now that it's their turn to get axed, they're crying and whining, and they actually got Twitter to ban the meme. Think about this, folks. We live in an era where social media companies think they can ban memes and ban our opinions and ban the truth. Twitter bans conservatives for tweeting learn to code, but took no action against accounts calling for murder of Covington teens which I've recently covered, Sandman and the libel lawsuits, all of that good stuff. I made a video here that explains fully what happened. You can still check it out if you haven't seen it already. And in this, uh, in this video, I also discuss all of the celebrities, all of the journalists, all of the people who made death threats and threatened to dox them and basically tried to ruin their lives. All of them were not banned. But oh, Lord forbid, Lord forbid a Twitter user say, learn to code at a privileged journalist and they're little blue check marks, they get banned. They get completely silenced. And speaking of being silenced, this video, which got 46,000 views, you know, as of now, was demonetized. So let me ask you this. There was nothing violent in the video. I was talking about a court case. I was talking about the potential for a lawsuit. I was showing some examples and I had some reference, but there was nothing controversial. There was nothing bad about this video. Why was it censored? Here you can see limited, not suitable for advertisement, confirmed by manual review. After review, this video has been confirmed as not suitable for most advertisers. So why does it seem like in our modern society, every time we try to tell the truth, we are silenced. We are kept quiet. When someone tells the truth or pokes fun at someone or something, they get shut down. Because if you're not part of the far left, they view you as the enemy. They view you as a nuisance to be silenced. So all of your effort and all of your work and everything you say is shut down. Now I'm no stranger to this. I've been demonetized plenty of times and I'm sure it'll happen again in the future. Reporters for so long have been a privileged class. Nobody can say anything about them. No one can even criticize them. Or you'll be deplatformed, you'll be demonetized, Monetized, you'll be shut down, you'll be banned. You won't have free speech because the poor, poor journalists got their feelings hurt. Like the tiny babies, they really are. Over those same weeks, journalists who had been laid off have been told to learn to code because 4chan's crypto fascist politics board poll had noticed the layoffs and had formulated a plan to increase the distress of anyone who'd been let go. In a thread entitled Happening, HuffPo slash BuzzFeed slash other MSM garbage journalists fired, which discussed the extent and impending layoffs. There were dozens of responses laying out the learn to code plan, wrote Tyla Levine in the New Republic. Levine is a freelance journalist whose column at HuffPost had been cut off as a result of the layoffs at the company. In the place, Levine points out that learn to code was another targeted mass harassment campaign dreamed up by 4chan. Now look, I do enjoy it when everyone blames 4chan for everything, and I'm sure 4chan partook. As far as I know, it is not as they claim. There wasn't really an organized effort on 4chan to attack journalists. Learn to code was something that came up, but it wasn't, there was no operation. Our hero 4chan was not even flexing 10% of his true power. But what I do know is at the time, people were telling journalists to learn to code, and deservingly, they told a lot of other people to learn to code back when everyone was being laid 
played off. So now it was their turn, and I fully believe that this meme was organic. People on Twitter who've never heard of 4chan were saying it as well, and they were saying it because these journalists said the same thing to coal miners back in the day. But it's always fun, and it's always funny reading about Normie's poor understanding of 4chan. Uh, let's see what this, uh, let's see what the author of this article says. On its face, 4chan is a forum. It was started in 2003 by Christopher Pohl, rest in pieces, then a teenager as a place to post about anime. However, since then, the culture of the board has shifted. Its users were always trollish, playing pranks on the wider internet. Remember Rick Rowling? But in the run-up to the 2016 presidential election, they've become openly political. Today, 4chan is home of the far right. <laughs> they seed memes and ideas there that have ended up in President Trump's speeches and tweets, laundered through various blogs and websites that make up the right-wing media ecosystem. Last night, by saying, learn to code, Nunes again, wittingly or unwittingly, parroted one of those ideas. Better call the thought police. Now, I don't want to call this person a ignorant and dumb normie, but uh, let's take a look at 4chan. Here we are at 4chan, and you can see there are many different boards. This person makes the claim that uh, this website is was about anime and now is about attacking people. But if you look at these boards, I can see anime and manga. Of course, it's still a board, and uh, there's anime posts. Truly nefarious stuff. Truly the epiphany of evil. Oh, and look at this. A board about papercraft and origami. I can think of nothing more nefarious. Or how about the evil toy board? They want to destroy the world and put a toy in every child's hands. Evil masterminds. There's a lot of different people on 4chan. There's a lot of different boards. And there's a lot of different political beliefs. Video games, for example, is absolutely a cancer board. It's full of far leftists, it's full of lefties, and it's full of people who silence the truth. Video games is a leftist board. This has been known for quite a while. They don't allow people to talk about corruption in games journalism, and they shut everything down. So no, 4chan is not the home of the far right. This is the stupidest thing that I've ever heard. While the message may seem innocuous, the nature of 4chan meant that anyone receiving messages saying, learn to code online, was shot through with anti-Semitism, racism, and general hate. Well, that didn't take long. Do you see what I mean about these crappy journalists? About these losers? and these brainlets. Learner code apparently is anti-Semitism. It's racism. These are just buzzwords. It's false. It's absolutely not true. Learn to code was getting a back at these unethical journalists who lie and slander and look down on all of us, acting like they're so much better than us. They're so elite because they're journalists and they slap words on a screen. It's all nonsense. Absolute nonsense. When Fox News' Tucker Carlson ran a segment on Learn to Code, the meme was legitimized by a seemingly reliable source. The meme was legitimized? You don't need to legitimize a meme. A meme becomes legitimate on its own. It becomes organic on its own. It spreads like a virus. I've talked about memes in great detail, and I will likely talk more as we get further and further into the magic of memes and how it all really works. <laughs> See, this is what's wrong with the left. The experience of the Learn to Code campaign was being bombarded with harassment that others stridently claimed wasn't harassment. Being told death threats were a joke. Having my name broadcast mockingly on Fox News. All for the temerity of tweeting about losing a column, wrote Levine. It was an experience of being mugged by gaslight. Gaslighting. Gaslight, gaslight, I swear to God. They always use that word. They always say gaslight. No, that's not gaslighting, okay? It's telling the truth. These people on the far left are so mentally ill. They're so ill-equipped. They're so unable to see reality that they actually think that telling the truth is gaslighting. It's not. Get over yourself. You're spoiled journalists and you got laid off. See how it feels. See how it feels to be looked down upon. It is possible that Nunez didn't know any of this when he was speaking with Laura Ingram. After all, useful idiots have been a part of information operations since information operations became a widely practiced mode of warfare. Donald Trump broke the Republican Party and the rest of the right in so many ways, but his election has also reshaped how information spreads across conservative groups. The people making the memes are now the right's main intellectual organ. The rest are either useful idiots or deluded. Nunez's office did not respond to a request for a comment. <laughs> Oh man, so this is how the left thinks. I don't even think I really need to put any further analysis into this. I think it speaks for itself. The left is crazy. These journalists are crazy. They have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And clearly, <laughs> they don't understand anything. Donald Trump's election didn't change how 
information spreads. This is how information spreads. It's always been this way. Memes have always been out there. And politics has always been a memetic discussion, okay? These journalists are frankly full of it. But that's merely the obvious. Well, that's all for now, folks. <laughs> Let me know what you think about these journalists getting really mad over Learn to Code. I mean, even now, they're still crying foul because people are just returning the meme. Anyhow, this has been Mr. Obvious, and I'll see you all next time.